For Pacifica Radio, I'm Christina Onestead. President Joe Biden is using his executive authority to create a New Deal-style climate core that will serve as a major green jobs training program as the world faces climate catastrophe after climate catastrophe. In an announcement today, the White House says the program will employ about 20,000 young adults who will build trails, plant trees, help install solar panels, and do other work to boost conservation and help prevent prevent wildfires. Dozens of Democrats and more than 50 environmental and climate justice groups reiterated their calls for Biden to create a climate conservation corps ahead of the United Nations Climate Ambition Summit that kicks off today in New York. Meanwhile, protests continue ahead of the summit. Some 20 climate justice activists were arrested for blocking entrances to Bank of America Tuesday, which they say is the third largest financier to fossil fuel projects. <laughs> They also interrupted a Climate Week event where U.S. Deputy Secretary of the Interior Tommy Boudreau spoke. Blasted is signing off on the Willow Project in Alaska, a massive oil drilling venture that could release as much as 260 million metric tons of climate change-inducing carbon dioxide over the next 30 years. The group Climate Defiance posted this video on social media. Assistant Secretary Boudreau, you are a climate criminal. You signed the Willow Project. It is absolutely unacceptable to be approving brand new fossil fuel projects in 2023. At the nation's capital, climate activists were detained after placing a banner outside the White House demanding the president take action on climate change. Climate was a topic of the president's speech before the United Nations Tuesday, though much of his speech focused on Russia's war in Ukraine, which he framed as a threat to global stability. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky also addressed the United Nations. Christopher Martinez reports. Russia believes the world will grow weary and allow it to brutalize Ukraine without consequence. If you allow Ukraine to be carved up, is the independence of any nation secure? I'd respectfully suggest the answer is no. President Joe Biden blasted Russia for withdrawing from the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, calling that irresponsible. He also talked about upholding human rights and opposing abuses. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky also addressed the UN General Assembly, the first time he's spoken there in person. And the goal of the present war against Ukraine is to turn our land, our people, our lives, our resources into a weapon against you, against the international rules-based order. He talked about the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in terms of weaponization, referring to Russia's weaponization of food, of children, and of nuclear energy. He invited UN member nations to a peace summit he's organizing, and he called for united action. I'm Christopher Martinez. The two are scheduled to meet tomorrow as the Biden administration seeks an additional $24 billion in funding for Ukraine's defenses. The brother of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange says a delegation of Australian lawmakers are in the U.S. to secure his release. Assange was indicted during the Trump administration for publishing classified U.S. government documents that detailed possible U.S. war crimes during the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Assange faces life in prison under the U.S. Espionage Act and is fighting extradition from a prison in the United Kingdom. He's an Australian citizen. His brother, Gabriel Shipton, spoke to Australia. Australia's Broadcasting Corporation early this morning. The delegation is going to bring uh, that message that nine out of ten Australians uh, believe that uh, the charges against Julian uh, should, should be dropped. Press freedom advocates have long urged Assange's release. House Republicans have postponed a vote on a measure to keep the government open past the end of the month due to internal disagreements between the party and its far-right flank. Senate leader Democrat Chuck Schumer warns even if they pass a continuing resolution, it's dead on arrival in his chamber. The House Republican proposal, drafted and put together by the MAGA hard right wing, is slapdash, reckless, and cruel. It includes cutting investments to the Social Security Administration. Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell advised his colleagues in the House to keep the government open. I think all of you know I'm not a fan of government shutdowns. I've seen a few of them over the years. They never have produced a policy change, and they've always been a loser for Republicans. Uh, politically. 
but House Republicans' Freedom Caucus has said they're not afraid of a government shutdown. I'm Christina Onestead reporting for Pacifica Radio.